Hello and welcome to Wellness by Design today. I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer, your host. And today we are talking about something that's something so interesting to me and that's Ayurvedic medicine. And we are talking with Dr. Shivani Gupta. She blends together Ayurveda and you know, the East and West and she's been practicing Ayurveda for over 20 years. So I'm just really delighted to have her here. Welcome Dr. Shivani. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm always fascinated. I'm I teach yoga and I'm like have, always got this fascination for Ayurveda and I don't know a whole lot about it, just like little bits. But I know it's like a very holistic approach to like health and well-being and healing. And I'm just wondering, you know, why how did you come into practicing Ayurveda? I know you're passionate about it, and that usually comes from like some kind of drive. So what what drove you to want to become an Ayurvedic practitioner? Sure. So growing up, I'm from Houston, Texas, and every year we would go to India to see our family, spend time with our cousins, with our grandparents. And it was like I lived in two worlds. In the West, we approached everything one way. When I'd land in the East, my grandma would use turmeric and hinka pani and all these like spices and herbs and teas to fix any problem when we didn't feel well. And so growing up, I kind of saw that and I was like, weird, but okay. And <laughs> eventually by the time I hit high school, I was so frustrated because every time I landed in India, I would end up disastrously sick. I had this immune system that just was not defending me. And so that kind of planted the seeds of why does everyone else get to be healthy and sightsee and travel? And I'm the one who's left behind just because I had a spoon of chutney or something and I just went down. And also by that time, I was starting to see that every single time I landed in India, somebody would pass away of the advanced stages of diabetes. And so I started asking this question of what is happening here? What is wrong with my family? What is wrong with us that diabetes just takes hold and these are beautiful, successful, intelligent grandparents of mine and family members. I don't get it, but something has to be wrong here. Is it the water? Is it the air? Is it our behavior? Is it that we're such high stress, go, go, go entrepreneurs? And so it really led me on that journey of researching. And my brain is always chewing on ideas and trying to understand the answer. So by the time I hit college, I was like, that's it. I'm going to open a health spa that's Ayurvedic. We're going to have to change the world. And I was, I was in India once and I was so sick. And my parents took me to a doctor and he prescribed me 13 medications. And it was in that moment that I was like, you know what? No, I don't think your system works for me. I don't think your system's ever worked for me. I know you're going to get me out of my acute issue called I'm nearly hospitalized at the point I'm so sick, but mom and dad, like Ayurveda and yoga are outside these doors. There has to be a better way. That's when I went on my big journey. I detoxed. I healed my gut. I completely reset my system. I became what I consider like invincible. I am a very <laughs> strong, healthy woman, and I have been for decades now. And I learned how to build that from the ground up. And so that's why I really revere Ayurveda because I consider it like that foundation for having the help I want. And then I get to integrate so many different modalities on top of it. Ah, so when you landed in India and you would get sick and you went to see doctors there, are you talking about it wasn't Ayurveda doctors you went to see? It was more what we would call conventional or Western doctor style. Is that right? Correct. Correct, because India was occupied by the British at some point. So all of the West, it has moved <sighs> into India. The schooling's English, you know, everything's like on the British system there. And it's weird because you have both worlds there. You have East and West existing in India too. And so now I would say in the last five, 10 years, there's been this movement back to homeopathic, Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic hosp hospitals have both Ayurvedic and Western medicines working congruently together. But wow. back then, 20 plus years ago, that was not true. It was just, you go to your doctor and the doctor's using Western medicine. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So was your family into, uh, you know, the traditional Ayurvedic medicine at all or not? You know, I would say some of them are. I think the women held wisdom and they were sometimes using it and sometimes not just because you know, it's even like myself. I live in modern day society. I allow the household to live a Western lifestyle to some extent. And then when they have an issue, then I treat with Ayurveda. And so it was a big shift when I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I know that you want me to be successful, but to, to me, success equals death. 
that's what this template looks like to me. You guys are all doing it wrong. And so I reached into Ayurveda in a way that my family had never done. Wow. So it's like you were coming back to your roots you're from way back. Yeah. So how did you, you said you worked on your gut health and other things. How, how did you do this and how did you learn and what principles, can you give us like the, the 30,000 foot view of Ayurveda sure. and, and how sure. it can help you heal? Yes. So my parents were very successful entrepreneurs and they assumed that we, as their children would go to the best business schools and do the same thing. And so I was lucky because when I made that decision and I put that stake in the sand and I said, I will study Ayurveda. I will bring this to the West. Something here is going to work. This is my passion. My parents were 100% behind me and they were such burnt out, exhausted entrepreneurs. They were like, you're going to visit every health spa in India. We're coming with you. Let's go. (laughs) I had this like unlimited support to go headlong pursue my dreams. I think they were between companies or something at the time. So we went all around India. We went to South India, West India. Every Ayurvedic practitioner who was well known, I went like a researcher, kind of like a journalist with a lot of doubts. And I was like, heal me, show me, let's see it. Oh, you think I'm a pitta by my pulse? Let's talk about that. What do you think she is? So I was really kind of testing everything. I mean, I had the reverence of teach me, but I also in the back of my mind was like, I need to understand for sure that this is legitimate because I I want this to be what I do, but I need to understand it. So I got to learn everything. I got to do everything. A lot of Ayurvedic treatment in India is pretty disgusting. The way they <laughs> they get in there, the enemas and the colonics and the gel nathi pod, and I was cleansed on every level. And so it was just, it was a really interesting journey. But in the end, I was like, wow, we could have been doing this in the United States. We could have been doing this in the West. We could have known that annually a detox is so powerful. It allows all of our systems to be cleansed and for the lymphatic system to get the support it needs. We can bring the body into a natural state of healing and then it'll stay there as long as we maintain all the good habits. Um, the obsession with sleep and circadian rhythm and using nature's toolkit to support our bodies because we are made of nature. So there was so much wisdom there. Um, Ayurveda to me is a very full system of medicine. It's all encompassing. It has detox, sleep, digestive fire as a practice that we honor, how we eat, what we eat. Um, All the subspecialties are covered in Ayurveda as well. So because it's such a robust system, it can actually be overwhelming. And so my goal when I learned it was, okay, let me pull the golden nuggets because I'm not going to get everyone to do this every day. This is a lot. But if I can simplify it for them and get them to feel better, then they'll be willing to take it to the level two, level three, level four. And then it'll just be indoctrinated into their lives. They'll just live this lifestyle and thus we will have prevented disease. So that's how I looked at it. Right. Okay. Beautiful. Um, So we've got people listening to this podcast or watching the podcast, a lot of them, you know, with chronic conditions, a lot of people with chronic pain. How do you start with someone who comes to you with chronic pain, whether or not they've got a diagnosis? To me, diagnosis doesn't even really matter because the pain is just body's messenger telling us something's out of balance and let's get this figured out. (laughs) But where, where do you begin? You know, I like to show them that there's six pillars of health from Ayurveda. Um, My number one topic with them is how are you sleeping? Because sleep is when we clear inflammation. And in Ayurveda, we want them sleeping 10 to 2 because that's the most powerful time of day to clear inflammation, clear the lymphatic system and get the support we need. So I consider sleep the first foundation. I'm obsessed with sleep. I developed a tea and a formula for sleep because I just want everyone to sleep. Once we sleep, the body heals. And if we can get that healing in place, then we can add the next step. Um, And then as I was sharing with you, I built a turmeric supplement company about seven years ago after I did my PhD on turmeric. And my goal there was if all of orthopedics is going to give us NSAIDs and opioids for our pain, that's fine. They're using their toolkit. Can I add a new tool into their toolkit that they will also use as an adjunct in that toolkit to support us because I have thrown out my back. I have had horrible plantar fasciitis. I've had all sorts of things that prevented me from living my normal daily life. And I thought, well, drugs and things don't suit my body. 
I can't take those things. So I wanted to develop something that worked for me so I could stay in the game of life and exercising and moving. And so I always reach, reach for turmeric because I studied it so heavily. I think it's a plant that goes so well with our body. It absorbs so well. It, it's like magical plant medicine to me. It, it, it does so many things. And so my next recommendation is always dive into a potent turmeric supplement, mine or anyone else's, just do it. And then let's talk about diet. Because if you get the relief, you feel better. Once you get that relief, you're willing to go ahead and make new changes. But if you're constantly in the pain cycle, it's very hard to ask someone to do more. And then once you feel just that bit better, you're getting the relief. Okay, now let's talk about the things that inflame you. What in your diet, what in your lifestyle, what stressors, what is increasing inflammation daily? Because you don't want to constantly chase a problem with a pill. You want to address it at that root cause. Exactly. Yeah. I think you're the first person I have ever met that has a PhD in turmeric. You know, what What was it you studied in, in turmeric that like was uh, worthy of a PhD? I mean, it's, that's incredible, really. What did you learn yeah. through that study? You know, I was doing my master's in Ayurvedic sciences, and I feel like I could do that master's for the rest of my life, back to back to back, and I would learn so much. But I was sitting in a herbology class, and we were talking about ashwagandha and ginger and cumin and cilantro, and I was like, wow, I'm lucky I'm Indian, and I eat this food every day, that this is part of my life to eat all these herbs and spices. And when we got to turmeric, I was like, this could have solved all my family's problems. We were suffering from heart disease, diabetes, all these issues. These are all metabolic diseases. These are all inflammation-based diseases. And that's when it clicked for me. I was like, wow, inflammation is the root cause issue we suffer from. Why aren't we smart enough to go fix this? Like if societally, we're all going to subspecialists who are saying you have something-itis. And then yeah. we're like, oh, okay. Thank you for telling me I have something-itis. I'll take your pill we're not getting to the root cause of why are we inflamed? And so I sat there and I was like, that's it. I have to study that. And my advisor at the time was like, listen, you should do a PhD. And I was like, nerds do PhDs. I don't know what you're talking about. That sounds like a very long journey. He's like, don't worry, I'll guide you. You know, it sounds like you're going to create something in this world and being a doctor would help. And I was like, okay. So we embark on this journey. I had no idea how hard it would be to read the 6,000 scientific studies on turmeric. I didn't read them all, but gosh, it was, it was a very boring period of my life to sit there and learn to read the <laughs> science. Um, but I did it and I got, I got enamored with turmeric. It's a powerful antioxidant. So it's going to stop that rusting that happens as we age. It gets to the root cause. So it's not like, oh, I ate a blueberry. I helped my uh, oxidation in my body. Now it reduces oxidation overall. Like it goes after it and prevents it from happening. It's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. So when we talk about reducing that systemic, chronic, low-grade, persistent inflammation that most of us have, just through living life nowadays in modern day times, oh, yeah. it just simmers that down, brings it to neutral. So we don't get triggered and inflamed and, and have the bigger issues. And in my opinion, the, the metabolic pathways of disease that we build in our younger years that then manifest as disease later. So that's one of my favorite things about turmeric. Mm. Another is it's antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. So because it's an immune modulator, people like me, get to have an immune system that works, which is a big deal. I have a defense against the, the things that come at me. And then another powerful one is a vasodilator. So it is going to increase blood flow. So a lot of what we're talking about nowadays, people are talking about sexual dysfunction and we need more nitric oxide. And they're talking about how we need our brains to work better and our hearts to work better and our, our clogging of our arteries. And I'm like, well, you could just gently thin the blood, open the blood vessels a little more and you'd get that support. And turmeric will do it sympathetically. It's adaptogenic. It's only going to do what it should do and it won't go any further. And then I also find that the body like will take the turmeric and address all the big issues. Once it addresses the big issues, it starts addressing small issues. Like all the smaller parts of our body grab that turmeric and it has so many molecules that it can bind to. I'm part of a team that's studying how, why does turmeric bind to so much in our body? Why is this one plant capable of that. We're curious. So we're on this study journey together called a hackathon. So it's interesting because people will say my gingivitis got cured with it. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, first it went for the joint pain. 
then it went for the smaller things that nothing was fixing. So to me, I, I'm I'm a researcher now. So it, it's fascinating to me to, to find those, those new novel solutions that a plant can create for us. Because I think we've forgotten we are nature. Like this, this is the solution. Yeah. You know, Turmeric is, you said 6,000 studies. It is one of the most studied. Um, is it an herb? I'm calling it an herb. Yeah. It is. Okay. Uh, it is one of the most studied uh, in terms of, from what I understand, like pain relief and so on in terms of a natural one. It was one that I relied on really heavily when I was like in the really bad way. And it really helped a lot. Um, the uh, There's a lot of talk about how turmeric needs to be taken with pepper to be absorbed. Is there truth in that? Yes. So the way I explain that is out of the entire turmeric plant, only 3% of the curcuminoids. And out of those curcuminoids, the one curcumin is the most effective at reducing inflammation. And so the problem is most supplements out there are giving us tons of turmeric powder, which we could have bought and used in our food, and it is very inexpensive, or all three curcuminoids, the proportions are all wrong and the potency is wrong to drive the result. And then there's equal science that says turmeric with black pepper versus turmeric with a healthy fat is effective. And so you have to choose which camp you're in. And I went for the black pepper camp and I added black pepper to mine. Um, but I also tell people if you eat it with a meal and healthy fat, you can only be helping the absorption further, but you can also just take it on its own because the black pepper will increase that absorption by 2000%. Okay. What I find frustrating is people are running around drinking turmeric tea, turmeric lattes, turmeric sprinkled on their chicken and eggs, but they're not using the black pepper or a healthy fat. And if you have inflammation or pain, I don't believe that turmeric, the spice sprinkled in food will do the job um, because I'm Indian and we use and we use turmeric all the time. But when I sprained my ankle, I didn't use that as the way to get out of pain. I had to take the medical grade dosage in the right form. Mm -hmm. So the medical grade is separating out the the curcumoid, curcumin, what, what is Curcum it curcuminoids, and then just further taking just that curcumin at a full 98% grade potency to drive a result at a full 500 milligrams. Okay, the curcumin. Yeah, that was what I had been taking too. So yeah, some people say, oh yeah, just use, you know, some turmeric, you know, turmeric milk, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's it's not that it's bad for you. It's just that it's not going to give you that targeted result that you want to have. Exactly. Okay, got it. Now, is turmeric something, I mean, obviously if someone is experiencing pain, they probably have inflammation, so it's going to be helpful for that. Is it something that you sh it, like everyone should take every day or is it like, should you cycle in and out of it? Or is it just for when you're feeling not well? Like how do you, how does, how does it become part of your life? That's a great question. So I'm the owner of a supplement company. So the right answer from me is take it every day. But that's not what I believe. I think that no matter what supplement we take, we should be cycling with it. Right. Any supplement. It doesn't even matter. Even if it's your magnesium and your minerals, cycle in and out, cycle through. The body builds adaptations. The body needs a chance to have a breather. In Ayurveda, we teach that just by putting anything in the body, the body is having to react to it. And so giving ourselves periods of time where we are just not reacting to anything at all, good or bad, is a good thing. Um, so for me, I would say about 90% of the year, I take turmeric gold as my daily preventive because I just want prevention. I want an immune system supported. To me, I don't even need to take a multi. All of us have different philosophies on our vitamins and minerals. But to me, I'm reducing my inflammation. That's key. I'm taking my vitamin D. That's important. Certain things I'll do. And then... Um, I add on inflammation relief. It's another formula I built when I know I'm inflamed. So if I am going to go eat in a restaurant, I'll take it. If I have pain in my body, I'll take it. If if I'm feeling achy and, and I, traveling, whatever, I'll take that. So I look at it as kind of interplaying with what the body needs at a given time. And even within my supplements, I have two little supplement boxes on any given day. I'll intuitively sense like, hey, do I need everything? Yeah, take everything. And some days I'm like, you know, just take your turmeric and D, you're fine. You don't need to take the whole caboose. So right. I think it's just important to, to tune in with self. I also think it's important to cycle with what we take. 
when you say cycle, you said 90%. So is that like, you know, you go 90% of the year and then you take 10% off or is it like throughout the year, during the month, during a week, what kind of cycle schedule? So Ayurveda believes in seasonality. We believe that we should honor the four seasons. We should transition with the four seasons. You know, when it, I'm transitioning between a season, sometimes I'll do a quick detox, a three-day juice fast or a three-day like go vegan to clean up, whatever that is for me. Um, and so those transition points is usually when I'll just come off my supplements, all of them at the same time. I'll just take uh, probably three or four points in the year where I'll take five to seven days, no supplements, and then I'll come back in. Or I'll, I'll say, oh, I'm just going to take my probiotic and eat probiotic rich foods during this week. That's my focus. So it's really about kind of sprinkling through. I think a lot of times we choose to be so intense about things. We're like, I am on this diet and I do it every day for 10 years. And we have to learn that the body is shifting. I'm learning that loud and clear in my 40s that what I did in my 30s is not quite working the same way. And so each decade, can we shift and be a little flexible and adaptive with what what our new needs are for our body? And so in the same way, to do the seasonal thing really helps you just tune back into mother nature, tune back into the rhythms. And so cycling supplements with the seasons, I find to be more effective rather than saying every year in, I wouldn't do it in December because that's holiday season, but every summer I take two weeks off. That's just rigid. And I think right. we could instead have that flow with it. Mm. I really like the way you said, like, follow your intuition. What, <laughs> this is sort of off topic, but maybe not. How do you tell people to tune into their intuition? I'm curious about it. It's something I love and I love to teach. I'm just wondering what, how you teach that to people. You know, I teach that the healthier we are and the more we build our vibration to be clear, the more our intuition can speak to us. So for me, I used to live a life where I ate everything and I didn't realize gluten was causing my brain fog. I didn't realize that I was so checked out of life and checked into my own brain. And there was a whole conversation happening in my brain, but I was missing life in front of me. Now I'm so healthy and clear. My body has no pain. My body feels strong. Um, I'm never, not never, but rarely sick. So all of a sudden there's a clearer pathway between me and my inner self. And I think personal development helps. I think therapy helps any tool that we can, we need to reach for, for our own personal healing. Um, and so for me, building that vibration is key. And then I also teach a self-care habit called tea time is me time. And it's my favorite <laughs> self-care habit of all the Ayurvedic self-care habits is tea. And, you know, I mentioned, I don't know if it was with you, but it, India is British India. It was British India for a long time. So tea became like a, not only do we love chai as Indians, but we hold high tea as important. And so I have built a rhythm in my day where uh, in the morning, mid morning, high tea in the afternoon, and in the evening, I'm stopping for tea. And so when I stop for tea, no matter who I'm talking to, what meeting I'm in, I check in with myself. And I have built a practice of asking myself questions. I'll say, Shivani, how are you doing? Sometimes I'm like, gosh, I'm so stressed. So Shivani, what's the schedule today? And I'll look at my schedule. Did you leave time for yourself to eat? Will you be hydrating today? Have you built your schedule so you're just going to crash? And because I'm asking myself questions, my intuition gets a chance to give me answers. And those answers are always right. Yes. Um, and so you can kind of train and tune the intuition. Now, after pandemic, it's at the point now where I can read someone's energy and I get a very hard yes or no, if we're going to work together, if I should even be in their hemisphere. Um, I really lean into my intuition a lot. And it's beautiful when it comes to our health and well-being, because now it's like, okay, should I say yes to that or no? No. Okay. Yeah. I, I trust that that is for my well-being. And sometimes I'll defy it. I'll say, you know, I still want to do it. And it never ends well. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that. My parents are British, so I understand the whole tea thing. And, yeah. but you know, I never thought about using that, like actually walking away from my desk at tea time and just to take that time to just tune in. How am I feeling? What's going on? Like tuning into the body. So when you talk about the intuition or like seeing energy, is it something more that, or is it 
feeling rather than seeing like it's that kind of thing do you feel expansive or do you feel tight or leaning towards or backing away from is that how you feel it I feel it as a voice inside that gives a clear perspective or a lot of times I am tuning into feeling like I, I go to a lot of trade shows and conferences right now because that's what I'm trying to do is meet all the doctors and I I will I will either get a nothing reading where I just can't read them or it's a wow I love them like I, I'll fall in love with people immediately I'm like wow intuition okay like don't make me look weird <laughs> that I'm just falling in love with people in this way and then sometimes it's a repel like like yeah. you said like a pull back and I will just, I'll have zero ability to connect. And so I think playing with our intuition is very powerful. I, I do that with food. Should I be eating this? Yes, no. Um, our body has so much intelligence to it. We that That is one big point of Ayurveda is trust the body, honor the body, treat it like the temple that it is. And you will in turn, get to feel incredible. So I would say my my head space, my focus is better than ever. My emotional space, I'm happier in my marriage and happier with my children than ever in my life. And so it's so beautiful because that vibration is there after doing all the work, but it's also leading to a life that's that much more amplified, like that much more joyful, accessing levels of joy I never had before is a gift I didn't even expect by choosing to take care of myself and doing more self-care. Love that. And not only that, when, you know, our vibration goes out beyond, beyond ourselves, right? So it's trickling out and affecting like your children are going to pick up on that, your family, your husband, you know, all the people around you are going to feel that as well. So, you know, and as women, we do run our household for the most part, right? So, we can have a real profound influence on our household when, when we are feeling good ourselves. So Absolutely. I love that. Uh, it sounds like self-care is a big part of Ayurveda. Um, would you say that? Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. We have something called Dinacharya, which is these 12 self-care rituals of Ayurveda. And we want everybody to use them every day to have vibrant health. 12. Okay. Can we, can we touch on them? Sure. So the first one is starting the day with intention. When you wake up, you touch the ground, touch your forehead and thank mother earth or whoever you believe in, in the universe that thank you that I get to have another day. And I usually start by saying, what is my one word for today? And it's usually like impact and whatever that word is, will, will reverberate with you throughout the day. Then number two, wake up, obviously use the restroom first. We want everyone to have great, healthy gut and bowel movements and then sit down for meditation. So we want everyone first thing in the morning, meditate, tune in, do pranayam, your breathing exercises that oxygenate the body and wake up the body in such a beautiful way. Once you've done that, then when you, after you brush your teeth, use a tongue scraper. So we are all about the copper tongue scraper and how it detoxes all the organs of the body. It ignites agni, the digestive fire. It really supports you for vibrant health throughout the day. And then after tongue scraping, oil pulling. So getting a food grade oil will really help in detoxing the mouth, detoxing the oral microbiome and giving yourself a cleaner mouth. Um, it'll pull all the heavy metals, all the toxins out of the body through the mouth. And you make sure you spit it out in the trash, not the sink or the toilet or the shower. Important fact. So we don't have <laughs> our pipes. And then after that, it's time for yoga which at this point, most people in the West are like, okay, we're done now. Uh, I have to live my life. So in the ideal world, let's say on a weekend, you would do yoga. You could, you could actually do in, I actually move everything now into the evening. So after this, after yoga, it's a healthy breakfast. And what I do in the evenings for my self-care rituals, which are part of those daily rituals, I do dry brushing. We want everyone to move the lymphatic system of the body, exfoliate the skin. Um, there's so many pathways that can be moved. So it's like a daily, pretty much free, beautiful detox to do. Then a Pyung massage. A Pyung is full body massage using food grade oil for oiliation of the skin, oiliation of the joints. Um, you can use sesame oil. We consider that the king of oils or you can use coconut oil, almond oil, any food grade oil that you would cook with or eat, you can use on the body. And the body's going to eat it up. You have to be generous with that oil. 
And this is a very grounding practice to do. And if you do this and add the oil on the tops of your feet, it's the ultimate Ayurveda hack to get perfect sleep. It really improves your sleep quality. Um, and then after that, it's for me, tea time is me time. And I do collecting peace, which is meditating, but by walking in nature or um, on the road, I'll just stop. And if I have 10 minutes between meetings, I'll just tune into nature and collect my peace. So those oh are the self-care goodness. rituals. Some of them are more about hygiene. Some of them are more about peace. And some of them are about moving, like yoga is movement, but it it's so detoxing and healthy and, and builds a healthy body. Yeah. Wow. I love it. I'm actually doing quite a few of those, but not the daily oil pulling. And okay. also, so I've got a tongue scraper, but it's plastic. You mentioned mm -hmm. copper. Like, is that critical? Yes, we love copper. We love metals because we want to constantly remineralize the body. And there's one I've forgotten there. In the morning, we have a room temperature glass of water. Okay, it's a yeah. copper lined cup. And we encourage everyone to hydrate from the first of their morning. So after you brush your teeth, but that's what most people would prefer to drink that water as well. Sometime in that morning time. So water from a copper cup. Yes. Huh. I don't even know if I can buy a copper cup around you here. You can. They're much more available now because Ayurveda is becoming more popular. Wow. Okay. You've, you've told me some things I didn't know about before. Really, really interesting, Shivani. I, I love that. Okay. So, gosh, we've covered a lot of ground today. And I think the more I hear about Ayurveda, the more I want to learn more about it and practice it every day, really understand. I mean, there's a reason why it's been around for thousands and thousands of years, right? So exactly. uh, love it. Okay. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you want to make sure the audience hears? You know, the only thing I would share is if everyone can build a mindful medicine chest for themselves, which to me is a pharmacy, F-A-R-M, we have such a unique opportunity to play with herbs, spices, vegetable, fruit, variety. We have such an opportunity to dive into using these things more on a daily basis, whether it's ginger, having ginger lemon tea in the morning, adding cumin into our lives, using the herbs and spices that are out there and playing with them because they have such powerful benefits for us, for our digestive system, which is for our overall health. You know, For us to reduce our stomach inflammation is key for us to get out of that pain. Um, I myself will catch it sometimes. I'm like, wow, your plantar fasciitis is back. What are you doing? Okay, you're just inflamed. Let's address it there. What, what are the natural solutions? And then it'll go away. And so that's what I'd like to share is just ginger, turmeric, all these things can work synergistically together to give us that support and keep us in that healed state that we all want. Mm, so herbs and spices, playing around with them, adding them in. And does it matter whether they're dried or fresh? No, I mean, I do love the power of fresh in most cases, like with ginger and things like that. With turmeric, I see the value of the extracts and those potent versions. But most spices in their dried form are great. And if you like certain things like cilantro, so it really is play. A lot of it fresh is great. Some of it dried is great. It just depends on which one. I, I love that. Okay, wow, such a great, great um, ideas for people to incorporate and to help lower pain inflammation and just create a lifestyle that's going to support the body's natural healing ability. That's what I love. Okay, um, so I always have one last question, Shivani, uh, for all my guests, and that is because the podcast is called Wellness by Design, Living Intentionally, love that starting the day with intention. So living intentionally, what is one intentional baby step someone could take today that's going to begin to initiate healing in their body? Hmm. An easy, great one is to build a sleep ritual that they can use to consistently train the mind that it's time for bed. So one thing I teach is just like when we have kids, we build this whole sleep ritual. We do the essential oils. We turn down the blinds. We play the sleep music. There's a bath involved with an oil massage. There's a lot involved in training that mind and body that it's time to close the day and honor sleep as its own entire section of the day. Just like you would honor getting ready in the morning. Could you honor going to bed? And so that's the step I would take is what are the steps you can put in place? What beautiful ritual can you put in place today? whether it's tea 
or a step that will train that mind to say, okay, you know what? I'm done for the day. I'm closing the chapter on today. I'm honoring sleep as the next most important thing that I do. Beautiful. And you mentioned earlier that that between being asleep between 10 and 2 is critical, right? Yes. And so that means your sleep ritual is not going to start at 10. Correct. So do you recommend like an hour before, 30 minutes before, or does it matter? I want dinner done by 7. I would prefer that all work and house-related tasks done by 8 that we are doing winding down, whether it's by reading or something, by nine, sleep rituals at nine, in bed by 9.45, asleep by 10. That's ah. ideal. <laughs> and That's... <laughs> I know it's a little strict and I, even I am not perfect at that, but I, I have that pattern. My kids sleep a little later. So by 10.30 in my house, we're all out and I move that up as much as I can towards 10.15. 10, 15. 10 okay. o'clock though is the ideal. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be consistent throughout the week too. Like what about weekends or, you know, does it matter? Some people will say, well, I want to go out. You know, I can't be home and in bed at that time. What do you think about that? I prefer that we build the healthiest lifestyle possible to have the life that we want. And so I would say 90% of the time I'm not going out. I'm not eating and drinking late. If I attend an event, I've already had my dinner and everything. Yes, I'll attend it. Get home self-care rituals so that I can be wound down enough to sleep on time. So yes, we can live our life, but really make it so that the what I have found is once you're so healthy, those things are an irritation because they take you out of feeling phenomenal. Yeah. And so once you've built this lifestyle of feeling awesome and having so much energy, yeah, I can go out, but I'm more stressed that I'm going out and I'm going to overturn the apple cart and it's usually not worth it. I found that too, that, you know, now that I, I do have such a healthy lifestyle that when it, when, it, when I, it gets thrown off for whatever reason, sometimes it's traveling, sometimes it's, you know, going out and being social, I really, really notice it. And it, it is great motivation to get back on that uh, healthy lifestyle again. Okay. Yeah. This has been so good, Shivani. Oh, and uh, you mentioned that you do have a turmeric product, right? And uh, so I think you've got it arranged for people can, uh, people ha will, can use our code to get 15% off. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So the website is fusionaryformulas.com. It's F-U-S-I-O-N-A-R-Y. And the code is wellness by design. You'll get 15% off and free shipping on your orders. We only ship in the United States right now, but one day we'll be even bigger and out there. And then for more information on me and Ayurveda, you can visit shivanigupta.com. Okay, beautiful. And uh, so I want to, I just want to say, stress again, because I do have, I'm in Canada and I do have some of our listeners are in Canada as well. So look for a quality product in Canada and make sure that you're getting something that's quality because when, when you're getting supplements, <laughs> you pay you may pay more for quality, but if you're not getting quality, you're totally wasting your money. So it's more uh, cost effective to get what what is quality. So if you can order Shivani's, make sure that you get quality. And I know that what Shivani's creating is quality because you can hear her passion. She's got a doctorate in turmeric. You know, she's only going to be putting out the best. So thank you so much, Shivani, for having that for our audience. So thank you mentioned you. your website. Are you also on social media? Yes. On social media, I'm at Dr. Shivani Gupta on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube. I have a lot of videos on YouTube about Ayurveda as well. Beautiful, beautiful. This has been so good. I really, really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for, gosh, like changing your life and going going to all those uh, those spas in India and learning all about it so that you could share all this with the with the Western world as well. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being a guest today on Wellness by Design. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you as well to the people that are watching and listening. And if you know someone that's got chronic pain, and probably you do, because there's a lot of people, 25% of the population with chronic pain, share this with them so that you can help them change their life so they can have the quality of life they deserve. All right, have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time.